What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. So if you've been here before, thanks for tuning in to yet another video. And if you're new here, please get down there and hit subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the future videos. So we finally got our first snowfall here in Virginia for the year. So that means that we cannot go out. We didn't get much, but I don't like taking the cars out when it's snowing. Not because my cars can't handle it, because they can. I do it because other people like to be stupid here in Virginia and they don't really know how to drive in the snow. And they like taking their rear wheel drive cars out and act reckless thinking that they're gonna get traction in the snow when in fact they don't so I'd rather stray away from all that and just stay at home so it's a perfect excuse to start working on the injector tester here in the garage I got the heater going right now it's set at 77 degrees so I'm nice and warm right here on the workbench we have everything we need to make this injector tester I got the fuel rail right there I got some PVC that I have here left over in the garage. So we're gonna make like the frame of everything out of this. We got the pulse sender right here. We got some hose fittings and we have our measuring flasks right here. So basically we're gonna be doing two injectors at a time like that. And then we're gonna see how they measure up to each other. So for those that have been following the videos, you guys already know that I am doing this because the BMW is down and I need to check the injectors on it, but I'm just saying this for all the new people here. So we're gonna be using the IAG fuel rail only because I don't want to take this motor right here apart to take the fuel rails out because it has all the annoying fuel lines connected to these stock fuel rails. So instead of messing with that, we are gonna be using these. Now I won't damage them before using them anyways because I'm only gonna be running some carb cleaner in them. So if anything, They'll be nice and clean when I throw them in. So just to get an idea, these will go on a baseboard, something like that. The injectors will come out and into the flasks like that. And so fuel will be coming in through here. And then on this end, I'm going to be putting a fuel pressure gauge. So that way I know exactly how much fuel is running through it. And then obviously the injectors will be here and I'm going to connect them with that. I did get two connectors for injectors right here. So I'm gonna splice these into the pole center right here and everything should be good. So basically I'm gonna cut the board up to like right here, I guess. Then I'm gonna screw another board coming upwards basically to hold this up here. And, ooh, I almost broke that. Oh, we're good, okay. So basically, yeah, for that and then the hose that is gonna feed everything in here is gonna come up here. I got a 180 degree fitting right here that's basically gonna send the line up here. So it's gonna go like this, it's gonna shoot this way and then come up with this little 90 degree elbow I got. So let's go ahead and start getting this mocked up and then we'll work on this. All right, so we got our base plate cut out. I also pulled out these injectors from the motor right here. Like I said, I didn't want to deal with all these hard lines going around the motor. So I didn't want to use these fuel lines, but I just unbolted them and popped them up and then popped the injectors out. So basically I'm gonna go ahead and pop them in here and they'll sit somewhere in here like that and we should be able to see how they flow and how much they flow. By the way, just to let you guys know, I got this idea and inspiration from Luke over at the Subaru Only channel. He built one a couple years ago and that's where I got basically the big general idea for doing mine. When I watched it, I watched it about like eight or nine months ago and I wanted to do one, but I never did. And now I have like the perfect excuse to do one, even though it's not a good reason because that means my car is down. But yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and build this one. If you guys wanna go check out his channel, I'll put a little tab up here. He does a lot of really cool stuff on his channel and he has a nice coupe RS that he's building as well. But anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and pop these in here and grab all my fittings and start working the lines on the fuel rail itself. I have to put the plug down here as well and the gauge will be on this side and the line, the feed line will be coming through here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that set up real quick.
All right, so I basically got the fuel rail fixed up right here. So as you can see, I put the plug in the bottom, got the injectors popped in there. I got the regulator or just the gauge here and the 180 degree bend here. I already checked and made sure that this 3 8 hose would go in there and it does. So basically it's gonna basically sit sort of kind of like that. And like I said, the line will come out and then up and then I'll be filling it up right here. So right now what I need to do is I need to make sure that these plugs plug into the injectors right here because right now they don't. And I trimmed away a little bit at this one and it's almost getting there, but I really only need like the inner plastic part. So this whole shell outside right here, I'm just gonna trim it off with the Dremel. So I'm gonna work on that right now and I think I'm gonna get a piece of metal to put on top of the flasks right here to hold the injectors in place and we should be good to go. All right guys, so this is where I'm at right now. I got this connector basically shaved down to like just the bare connector part. I took the shell completely off. I'm just gonna just grind it down a little bit to smooth out all the rough edges, but basically they make perfect contact. I don't know if you guys can see, but once it goes in, it makes really good contact. Like, see, there's some force there. So basically these are good well one is good to go i need to do this other one and i also have this lined up right here i'm gonna have to cut this and also the metal piece that i was talking about i marked it basically so it can sit like that obviously i'm gonna cut this part out and then i'm gonna drill some holes and then this will go through it and sit nice and snug in there that way it doesn't try to pop out so i'm gonna go ahead and work on the connector right now because that's pretty quick and then the rest of the stuff i'll do tomorrow because it's getting pretty late so i will catch you guys in the morning all right guys so a little bit of change of plans i realized this pvc was going to be too narrow so i found this piece of mdf laying around so that's what i'm going to use as like the backboard so basically i need to run Let's say this is gonna be somewhat like this. Hopefully it doesn't fall. And so the line is gonna run here and then kind of like out in this area, the line is gonna run up and that's where I'm gonna fill it up. So it's gonna come down, it's gonna bend somewhere around here with this 90 degree elbow into here and then it'll flow in here. So that's basically what it's gonna look like right there i might have to just cut it down a little bit because it is pretty long and i need to drill the holes for this and then i also want to mount this to the backboard so i got these two little pieces cut out so they'll mount up something like that so it'll be nice and sturdy on there so this will move and then these will push into it so I think it'll be better so that these don't try to pop out from the rail right here. So this will be like a nice sandwich for them. So right now I'm gonna start measuring how much I need of that metal right there. And then I'm gonna cut it and drill the holes in for the injectors. Oh, 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 oh. I also, I guess, fabbed up these little clips to hold the hose like that onto the baseboard like that. These were originally P clips, but I hammered them out and then bent them into these that go around perfectly around the hose right there like that so we're good to go on that All right, so I got this thing pretty much trimmed down to where I need it to be. So it's gonna sit something like that. These can go in. So basically like that. Like I said, the line will travel this way, then upwards. Um, right now, it got pretty late. So what I'm gonna do is I want to paint 
this metal bar in black and then this board in white so that everything looks a lot better once it's done. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that painted and leave that drying overnight and then tomorrow we can finally finish the whole thing. All right, so I got the black drying over here and then the white, I hit it with a primer and then I started hitting it with this white paint but as you can see, it just doesn't want to spray anymore. So I don't know. I went to Target to get this because Emily needed to go to Target. So I got it at Target when really I should have just gone to Walmart. So never again buying spray paint from Target because this was a waste of money and it literally ruined my paint job. So I got to go to Walmart to get another can tomorrow. So see you guys then. All right. Well, the backboard turned out really nice. I ended up sanding down all the imperfections from the splatter from the other can. And I found a good can of high gloss white. And the high gloss black came out so freaking nice. Like, this paint is really nice. So now that we got that done, I'm pretty sure we're able to fully work on it until it's completed now. So I think I'm going to start by screwing this onto this piece right here. And then I'm gonna put this right here like that. And this will just go like that. But I want to put these two little tabs right here under here to the base, kind of just to support the this metal bar a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that done real quick and then we'll see where we're at after that. All right, so this right here is the basic setup. I made brackets for this metal bar to hold the injectors in place. And I also put a piece of PCV back here and it's gonna hold the rail in place. So if I push it in, I need to mark some holes. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get some threaded rod with a nut on the bottom. And on top, I'm gonna use my countersink bits to open a hole, put a nut down there to hold the rod in place. And then this will just slide on and off. And then I can put some like knurled nuts on the rods themselves. That way I can take it on and off whenever I have to. And then this right here is where I'll be putting in all of my, uh, carb cleaner and it'll come down and I'll have this close like that and then once I'm ready I'll just open it right here it'll flow through and I have to get started on doing the injector pulse machine as well so that's gonna be next after I finish this but that should be pretty easy um, this right here I need to go find a uh, air fitting to screw onto here and I also need to get more of these to secure this to the base and then I'm gonna end up cutting it somewhere up here so it's not too overly long. I'm also gonna print out some stickers and put them right here just to give it some more flashy look and that should be it. So I'm gonna run to the store, get the rods and nuts and extra, I guess these are peak clips but like I said, I modded them and made them like this. So I'm gonna get some more of these and then we'll get working on the connector and we'll be good to go. All right guys, so I went to Home Depot and I got some washers, some nuts, some wing nuts and a threaded rod. And that's what I was gonna use to hold this, but I didn't like this setup. So I went to Lowe's and Lowe's actually had these like plastic knobs with the uh, threads. And I found these things that are for, I guess, furniture or wood. So I'm gonna drill a hole into the PVC like that. And then I have to hammer these in. And then I found these bolts that have these knurled heads. And I'm gonna replace these with those because I don't like how these are all, uh, basically they're spinning right now. So I'm gonna use this setup for that. And then 
I'm gonna use this setup for the actual fuel rail. So basically this will be holding on the fuel rail like that. I also got these new P clips that I already modified to be into these like this. So I'm gonna work on this first, then I'm gonna mount everything and use this to hold down the hoses or the hose on the backboard and then we'll get started on working on the controller. All right, so I'm about to start working on the controller right here. The controller has two leads, one positive, one negative. So what I want to try doing is connecting positive and positive from the plugs like this and then putting them both into one and then connecting them that way. Hopefully it works. I mean, I got this one, it might be a little too thin, so I can always use something for a thicker gauge. So I think that's what I'm gonna do right now. That way the controller will be ready. I also worked on this last night. So this is a bracket I made to basically just hold the controller up on the board like this. That way it doesn't move around. I've never welded metal so thin before. So I was like, in the beginning I was burning through it, um, but I just filled it up with weld and then just grinded it down and it looks pretty good. So right now I'm just gonna throw some filler primer on it and then hit it with some black and then that should be done as well. All right guys, so right now I have it hooked up to this little battery right here. Um, hopefully they don't touch. I just wanna make sure it works, so let's find out if we can hear them go off. All right, so I think they are going off, so I think we're good. So like I said, the bracket will be somewhere up here and so that will be like the whole contraption right here so i'm gonna go ahead and get that painted and then i'm gonna be tying in the hose to the backboard right here i'm gonna go ahead and do that right now and then we'll see where we're at Alright guys, so we have our injector tester apparatus here completely built. Now the only thing left is to test it out. So I'm going to hook up my positive and negative to this little battery I have here. And I'm going to hook up the injectors right now. Alright, so as you can see, we got this thing on. We are going to turn it to mode 1. And we're going to fill it up with some carb cleaner. So we can see that it's all the way at the top. I did spill a drop here on my gauge, but it's okay because we're gonna be somewhere around here anyway, so this doesn't really matter. Nothing went through here because I haven't opened up the ball valve. So right now I have my compressor set between 40 and 45 PSI. So I'm gonna go ahead and hook this up. So I got it hooked up. This is a reason why I chose to go with this contraption right here. So it can bend down, I can just shoot air up into it. So right now, if we were to open this, it should, yep. So we got about, mm, like about 30 PSI. So maybe we need to go up a little bit. All right, so now we are a little bit above 40 PSI, so that should be good. That's like around the middle of a uh, good fuel pressure. So let's go ahead and hit pulse, see what happens. 
We'll set it in mode two. This should do 50 pulses, let's see. Oh yeah. All right, so I got this thing filled up all the way to the top with the valve open, so a lot more volume now. The fuel rail itself should be holding a lot, and then the whole line all the way up to here added to the previous amount that we had. So we're gonna go ahead and turn it on. I wanna set it on mode four now, cause this is supposed to be pretty long. So let's check it out. All right, well, we can see that these are pretty clean. And if you look down here at a more level angle, they are shooting about the same amount. So I'm guessing these injectors are good. I mean, the motor doesn't have that many miles on them. So yeah, they should be pretty good. It does look like that one is a little more colored than this one. So maybe this one was just a little bit dirtier, but overall, they're not really dirty, dirty. So these check out. I might just go ahead and pull the other two out of this motor out just to make sure they're clean and shooting at the same rate. So I'm gonna end off this video right here. This is now the second homemade tool that we make on this workbench right here. First we did the smoke machine and now we have an injector tester. The only thing that I might change on this is I want to probably extend the bottom base here just so I can add a battery like right here. So I don't have to keep getting my jump pack. I can just have a battery right there. A 12 volt battery is like, I don't know, like 15 bucks, maybe like 12 ish on Amazon. So I'm gonna order one of those that way. I like having everything for one purpose. So if I have this thing just ready to go to just fill it up with carb cleaner and air, then I'll be set. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed and learned how to make your own injector tester at home. Again, shout out to Luke for giving me the idea. His looks pretty badass as well. So if you liked it, make sure you smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. And as always, keep moving forward and stay on the gas.